the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and the police got a wake-up call from President Muhammadu Buhari on Tuesday that they must ensure that election results reflect the wish of the people. The president spoke when he hosted INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu and Inspector General Mohamed Adamu at the State House in Abuja. The president promised to ensure transparent, free, and credible elections by employing all relevant state institutions. The president restated his determination to give Nigeria an electoral system that meets with best practices anywhere in the world and charged the electoral umpire to stick to the rules of fair play. And now we are joined by Dr. Femi Edou Adekoke, a public affairs analyst, uh, to speak on this. Now, um, you must have heard that news of the president, you know, charging uh, the electoral umpire to do the need for uh, this time. Now, would you say in Nigeria we've seen credible, free, and fair elections over time? Good morning, Amaka. Good morning. <laughs> <coughs> well, we are over time. We have not seen free and fair election. Even in the last election that was held, it was mad with uh, election malpractices, violence all over the country. And even after the general election, the follow-up elections, uh, the Kogi and the Bayesa election, mm -hmm. we saw what uh, became of the election ground or the vote, uh, the pulling boots became like a war zone. So we haven't seen that. Hmm. In Nigeria, so in far. recent time, yes. But are we hope? I mean, is there a sense that is this this call? Would you say this call would charge, um, you know, the electoral umpire to do the right thing? Because even that will take me to uh, my question, my second question, which is: Do you think they have gotten their acts right by any means? Well, let me start from the problem in Nigeria is that we don't even have the right uh, electoral process. Let's go to the solutions. The, the electoral process, <laughs> the, that's, for you to have solution or solve a problem. You must identify the Yes, issue. you must have identify the foundation of the problem. Our electoral act is faulty. Yes, good call from the presidency to the uh, INEC. Personally, I don't even feel there should be a call to the police. We've seen election all over the world and the, and the global standard, police are not even seen. Hmm. They might be on the background doing some uh, intelligence monitoring, but not the way they are in Nigeria in the face of the people. Uh, asking whether they've gotten their act right. I don't think INE can get his act right because he's not it's independent. It's a serious statement to, do, yes. to say. Yes. Presently, the way they are, because they, they are said independent. They are not independent. I would really say that. Who plays a pipe that takes the tune? It's still under the... Uh, ambient of the presidency, the government is totally controlling Heineck. So the presidency that is making this call, they need to do the needful by the reform of our electoral act. Mm -hmm. Then we will now see if Heineck will get their acts right. We'll soon get into 2023, and that's another election. Yeah. So what do you think will be the way forward so we get credible election moving on? Um, the way forward is the presidency, the federal government, the National Assembly, all arms of government judiciary, get their acts together and walk the talk. Mm -hmm. Start the reformation of our electoral uh, act now, before okay. 2023. All right, Femi, I'll still come back uh, to you uh, to share your thoughts more on that. But still on the election-related matters, the national leader of the All Progressive Congress, Bola Tinubu, has dismissed the claims that President Muhammadu Buhari would be seeking a third term in office. He recalled that the president had vehemently opposed the third term agenda of one of his predecessors some years ago. Tinubu, who visited President Buhari on Tuesday, stated this while addressing state house correspondents in Abuja, the nation's capital. The APC chieftain, however, urged Nigerians to believe in the president, whom he said would never have any thought of seeking uh, re-election. And still with me in the studio, it's um, um, Dr. Femi, you're still here. Now, you've heard the, the Bola Tunibu saying that the president obviously is not going to be seeking a third term for reasons that he uh, stated. Uh, and he also said that it is too late for to talk about zoning and successor at this point. What are your thoughts on that? Well, 
is uh, I will have to agree with Ashwajibola Mektinumbu because the president himself on three or four occasions has denied and has said he's not going to seek third term agenda. Mm -hmm. So we were holding him to his words and he's coming out to even confirm because I believe he's closer to the president there in the same party. Mm -hmm. So and he's coming out to confirm what the president has said. So even within their party, if there are people who are nursing the idea, they're already killing it, which is a, is a, is a welcome uh, mm. development. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the second question is, is it too early or is it too late to talk about zoning mm. and uh, uh, successor? Well, on zoning, I don't know, there's no zoning in our constitution. So it's, it's a, a gentleman arrangement within the parties is going to be PDP or APC. So that's their party problem. It's a party issue if they decide to do it or not. But on the uh, succession plan, for, for every successful person, you must have a succession plan. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't just throw it in the wind that it belongs to anybody because that means the work or effort that you have put in place over the last eight years, let me bring Nigeria into case, by 2023, APC and Buhari administration would have been in government for eight years. So if they don't have a tangible and a, uh, a very robust succession plan, mm -hmm. that means the whole process or what they've done, what they perceive to have done, would, have, would just be throwing the wind. So mm -hmm. I think they should begin to, even if they didn't have it before, now is the time to begin to plan for succession because the president has said, it's not going for third term. Okay, I mean, it's it's a good thing. I agree with you also that the president is clarifying that because we've seen over time how yeah. African leaders would want to stick to power and when it's yeah. time for them to go, you know, they want to change the constitution, they want to rejig yeah. it this way yeah. or that. Now, let's talk about election. The, we There's been the advocacy for e-voting and in 2023, we are hoping. What are your thoughts on that? Are you one of those advocates who will say, yes, we should obviously invest in that and why do you think it's necessary? Absolutely. I am 100% for electronic voting. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I said is INEC independent, and I've mentioned about our electoral act. Why do we invest? Nigeria has invested so much in these card readers and all that, which are part of electronic voting. But as we speak, politicians still play on the loophole mm -hmm. in the law of our electoral process, and they go to court and get. And I, I will quickly mention that most of the people today in our elect, uh, uh, political office holders voted for are not voted for. Most of them got their judgment from court because there's a loophole. So that's why I always say that we need to get our acts right from the electoral act. That's the foundation. That's the rule. That's the law that propels our electoral, uh, elect, electoral process. So I'm for the e-voting because... But if we go e-voting 100%, mm -hmm. we might not be able to go 100% in 2023 because I can tell you Nigeria has a lot of rural areas where even ordinary phone, to use mobile phone, it's, it's difficult. It's almost impossible. Uh, so, but we need to bring it in. We can even do trial because we have uh, sub-elections mm -hmm. before 2023. I know those state election is coming, and those state election is coming. So we can do trial. E-voting is the best way to go because there are a lot of people who won't go to polling booths there are a lot of people who are not who will not be resident at that time at their, where they are registered. So they automatically get disenfranchised. Mm. So if there is e-voting, wherever you are, you can actually put in your vote. So I think that's the way to go. That's the way to go. Thank yeah. you so very much, uh, Dr. Femi, for sharing your thoughts there with us this morning. And the news will continue after this short break. We'll be back in a moment. Please stay with us.